The 25th of April is known as World Malaria Day, a day where the world draws attention to the necessity of the ongoing financial support as well as persistent commitment uh, to the prevention and control of malaria. Now, according to reports, a child dies every 60 seconds from the mosquito-borne infection, and that is why there needs to be a collaborative approach across government, business and non-profit sectors to hold its devastating effect, particularly on children on the continent of Africa. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined in studio by Tebo Homachokocha, who is the Deputy Director of Communicable Disease Prevention and Control at the Hauteng Department of Health. She's joining us in studio this evening. Tebo, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tavo, and uh, good afternoon to the viewers at home. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, uh, every year we commemorate World Malaria Day. Uh, you know, um, we are highlighting the need for continued investment, as I said, and a sustained commitment on the prevention of the disease itself. But let's talk about, maybe kickstart the conversation yes. by the theme for this year. Uh, what is it? It's exhilarating uh, the awareness of malaria just to have an equitable world. Mm. How yeah. important is, uh, you know, commemoration of the day just in general? This is a very important time for us, especially for a non-endemic area like Houghton province, yeah. which is regarded as a province which does not have a parasite or mosquito that lays uh, this malaria. Mm -hmm. So each and every year we make use that uh, during this time we uh, make a lot of noise as we can, especially in the communities. So we are having awareness that are happening in the communities, especially the hotspot areas and in hospitals as well, just to create awareness. And we're also training our clinicians, mm -hmm. uh, capacitating them because uh, in Houghton you might miss the cases because is not endemic for malaria. Yeah. So normally, what would be the symptoms to, uh, you know, look for? Um, we know it's an, it's, 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 you know, a province like, uh, as you said, uh, like Houghton Province. It's not the same as Bumpumalanga and Limpopo provinces. But for an ordinary South African, you know, yes. an ordinary Sowetan, what would be the symptoms of malaria? Unfortunately, Tabone, most of these signs and symptoms, they are differential. They are like other diseases. So if you have a flu-like symptoms, yeah. like chills, you're coughing, uh, you've got, sometimes you have some diarrhea, you are shaking, uh, you need to um, go to the nearest uh, facility. But the trick here is, because sometimes the disease can be missed, yeah. because it can be confused with other diseases, communicable diseases, you need to be upfront and also disclose your travel history, which is very quite important for us, so that uh, treatments is initiated quite early. But, you know, I'm, I'm interested in that one. I mean, people travel to different provinces and stuff. Uh, is it a challenge for uh, the health sector uh, in terms of people disclosing? Or, or they just confuse, as you said, uh, they confuse the, you know, this mm. as something else, maybe as just an ordinary flu. You know, we have a very uh, serious challenge in terms of people disclosing because majority of our cases are imported, as, yeah. as you might know, that we are receiving cases from other uh, ASADIC countries, such yeah. as Mozambique, uh, Zimbabwe. So when they reach our health facilities, it's difficult for them uh, to disclose, uh, basically, if they have went home, where did they travel. Sometimes people are very scared of being deported. Mm -hmm. So we are not getting uh, really uh, where people are from. Sometimes treatment is a bit delayed because of those complications. Mm. Yeah. So in terms of seasons, um, when do you see the cases going up? Uh, is it normally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during the um, summer season or during the cold season, normally which season uh, you, you, you guys are usually targeting? You'll be very much surprised. Last year, we even reported cases up until May, but normally we, we, we report cases from September up until uh, April, when it's uh, still very hot. Those are our malaria peak seasons, and we are seeing a lot of cases around January and February, especially due to the cost that people are coming back from mm -hmm. these uh, uh, countries. But due to some uh, climate change, which, which we believe, so we are seeing cases 
throughout uh, the year actually we it just said we have some peak seasons where we are seeing but last year we did have a peak season even in may yeah. uh, we were still seeing a lot of uh, people or patients coming to the facilities due to malaria so malaria does it affect everyone or you know it is on just uh, you know the older uh, older people maybe i mean how do we mm -hmm. um, is, is it everyone who can who can contract uh, 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 malaria Everyone can contact malaria, can contract it, but we do have high risk groups such as pregnant women, uh, people living with HIV, children under the age of five years and elderly. So those are the critical ones. So once they get malaria, the chances of them surviving from it is quite scarce. I want us to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, I want us to delve deep into, uh, you know, the commemoration of the day. And as we look at uh, also some of, uh, you know, how people can also notice the different symptoms uh, when they are at home or maybe if they are coming from a different province or a different country. Let's take a quick break. We coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Thabo Malukwani. We're still joined in studio by Tebo Homa Chokocha, who is the Deputy Director of Communicable Disease Prevention and Control at the Houting Department of Health. And she's here to talk to us about the malaria and the state of the disease in the country as today marks World Malaria Day. She's still joining me in studio this evening. I mean, Tebo, um, you know, I'm interested in finding out how early or late can um, one notice uh, the symptoms. I mean, mm -hmm. as we, you know, when we started the conversation, you said that um, sometimes people confuse mm. uh, these communicable diseases. How early or late can people uh, actually, you know, uh, just uh, notice the symptoms? Okay, we, we, we have what we call incubation period. Incubation period, the table in lean men is like whole up here, something is still cooking, yeah. and then the disease has such a as yet. So, normally, when you come back from the endemic areas, especially we have cases, Jerry the report down from Limpopo, part of some part of Limpopo, they've got malaria. Yeah. Uh, we have KZN and also Mpumalanga. So, Kidi, three provinces in the country that year rank the endemic areas, meaning where malaria is a norm there, and they know, especially when they go to the facilities, where no know malaria right away. So uh, signs and symptoms, each year, it got for, for seven days, but normally from 10 to 14 days, that's when someone at Omaho won't chat those kind of fever, ngarwa, hotlola, wa shaker, kikikikenoko yana yu. 10 to 14 days, that's the max. So um, malaria, for instance, is it yachelana now? You know, mm -hmm. do I mean if a person is coming from another province yes. or another country? I mean, mm. these countries in the Sadek region, you can come via taxi yeah. uh, to the country. So, um, it, can you? Is it transmittable, or, mm -hmm. or uh, is, is it, can a person maybe in a taxi at Telomo, for okay. instance? Or normally, how does it? Okay. Um, mm. Malaria is an affair, he ulumileke munang. Yeah. And munang wahona is called a female mosquito known as Anophilis. Ki mosquito omi wan u ulumang batu and then wabachela ka malaria. So malaria regria from the mosquito, mara from human to human. It has never been proven hori nanka chela tabu ka kaka malaria. No. But what happens is Majority of the cases, or some of the cases, Jerry the report on how take, we call them Odessen malaria. Meaning, for a little taxi, it got off from Limpopo or it got off from Mozambique, Moto Aichechika, Mobegeng, and away, about a travel like that mosquito. So the mosquito, Mobabulang Hona, most of the Odessen malaria cases in Houting, uh, the, 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 the houses close by the main roads. Then, mm -hmm. then that uh, mosquito can escape. Mm -hmm. Those are the sum of the cases. 
It's, a, it's, it's interesting. I've, I've never heard of it. Uh, yeah. It's new information. It uh, so, so currently now, what is the state? I mean, you spoke about three provinces yeah. that are malaria prone. Um, so what is the general state of malaria in this country? Are, are, are we in a crisis mode or we still in a phase that we are able to manage it? I wouldn't say we are in a crisis mode. Uh, we, it is still manageable. And there are some of these endemic areas like Konali Renali Strategy, SAR 2019 2023, which came to an end, uh, but it has been extended to 2028. Renyaka will eliminate malaria. So, malaria in those areas, endemic areas. Because those uh, parasites or mosquitoes, mm. the ones that they are targeting. So at the present moment, it's still controllable. And there are those areas that are now reporting zero malaria cases. So there's a lot of advances and progress that has been made so far. Mara problem arena, that mosquito, we are vulnerable. And this is an economic hub. Majority of the people are coming and flooding to Gauteng. Yeah. So uh, we are relying on SADC countries to eliminate this mosquito before we can really take a break and say, oh, okay, now we are seeing some progress. We have a lot of cases, more than even KwaZulu Natal. Mm. Shocking indeed. Um, I, I mean, so in terms of resources, yes. you know, the capacity, the manpower, to deal with that as a province, as Gauteng province, do we have people with the necessary expertise that are able to shield, uh, you know, uh, the health system in this province mm -hmm. uh, against, uh, you know, s uh, s such communicable diseases? And also, I'm, 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 are we really prepared, as you said? Mm. Sometimes, I mean, we are vulnerable because we are an endemic province. Mm. Um, are we ready for in case if there's a spike in, in terms of the cases? Okay, just like uh, we have what we call the outbreak response teams. I'm wearing one of the jackets. This is uh, the teams that are looking in, into the number of cases that are being reported uh, in Houghton province. Uh, we are monitoring them each and every day. So should we note that they are spark and we can also see where these cases are being reported to. So once we identify what we call hotspots, where a lot of cases are being uh, uh, reported like Tembisa, then we deploy the teams to go and uh, 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 make awareness there and, and medicate. The other thing is we do have uh, like um, medication that is available for us uh, to also treat our patients as they come to our facilities. But however, Tabo, we have, a, as I've mentioned before, the challenge is people not disclosing where they are mm -hmm. from. Yeah. Um, let me apologize to the viewers there because you touched the mic and it made a bit of uh, sound there. Apologies for uh, that sound. Um, as we go to the ad break, how informed are people, you know, uh, when it comes to malaria? Do people actually know uh, the severity of this communicable disease? I don't think our people, they do understand uh, the severity of our disease. For instance, today we're supposed to be commemorating uh, malaria at one of our districts in Swani. But however, due to a, a lack of knowledge about what disease this disease is about, uh, we were somehow not allowed to come and make uh, awareness because people started complaining about water, about the toilets not functioning. Mm -hmm. So these are just a mixed uh, it, it, it clearly shows you how much informed people are how much people are confusing the Department of Health with other stakeholders let's uh, wrap up the conversation after the ad break my guest is Devo uh, Machu Kocha they're from the Department of Health in the province in Houghton province there we're talking a malaria world malaria day and uh, the importance of prevention let's take a quick ad break we're coming back after this Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. We're almost at the end of the show and I've been talking about World Malaria Day as we highlight the state of the disease in the province and look at efforts to control it. My guest uh, tonight is Deputy Director of Communicable Disease Prevention and Control, Deboho Jokocha from the Gauteng Department of Health. Now, Deboho, what is the department doing 
you know, in terms of awareness uh, to get the message across to the people. I mean, you've highlighted a very important aspect saying mm -hmm. that um, it, it, it gets difficult for, you know, government programs to get to the communities because when they get there, they raise other service delivery issues there. Yes, yes. So uh, at the current moment over the years, uh, beside commemorating uh, the World Malaria Day, we do have some uh, radio slots in our local uh, radio stations where we talk about uh, malaria and uh, uh, people to be aware of the disease as well and to be knowledgeable of the disease. And also we went to further as the department because we can see that there is a gap. When we try to reach uh, our immigrants, especially the Mozambicans, because majority of our cases are coming from Mozambique. So when we try to reach them, with, uh, we identified that there is a language barrier. So we uh, then partners with Doctors Without Borders uh, for them to translate our IEC materials, our posters, into Portuguese. So we are trying our level best to, to reach a, a bigger audience and, and, and to those people that are coming from certain countries also to be made aware of what is available for, for them, uh, what kind of preventative measures they can take before, especially when they are going mm -hmm. home. Because we have uh, what we call a chemo prophylaxis which is a doxycycline e available more the public clinic in Charina Kamu Kalidu Hospital. So if you travel to the endemic area, you must disclose how long you're going to stay there because they must give you that medication. So two days before Uzena into what we call endemic areas, Usanjo Unwedi Pilisije. And you must be very consistent, tab. So take the medication while you are there, take that on daily basis. And when you come back, you still continue taking the medication for 30 days. But we do have another one, which mm -hmm. is Maletec. I think you've seen them, Mozitec. Yeah. So Mozitecs are coming at a fee. So you can't find them at our public uh, facilities. You need to go to some pharmacies yeah. to, for you to get that or private institutions. Uh, so you, uh, two days before you enter, while you are there, seven days after you come back. However, people must take note more, uh, doxycycline is not eligible for pregnant women and children under the age of eight years. So normally we discourage people who are pregnant and children to go to these endemic areas. But because moto tap, and then if you then you you go to Limpopo. Unfortunately, we had a case uh, in the previous years where a pregnant woman called. We advised, and she went to the endemic area. Unfortunately, she died sooner after she came back because she's vulnerable. And as much as malaria is preventable, it can be very lethal. Mm. Um, so. I mean, in terms of the African continent in general, what is it that, um, uh, is it an issue of, uh, you know, lack of resources or we haven't really invested too much in, in, in you know, mm -hmm. the preventative measures and also maybe the health systems and, and in various countries are also, uh, you know, they, they are not really well equipped yeah. to deal with this. Hence, we are seeing, because, you know, you can travel to other um uh, uh, countries, mm. maybe in Asia, and th there's less compared to the African continent. Yes. And it makes, you know, us, you know, when you travel to other countries, mm. uh, victimized, if I may put it that yeah. way, by other countries. How, what seems to be the, the situation? Are we really uh, not investing too much in uh, more in, 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 in addressing this? I mean, it's not only malaria in the African continent. No, it's not only that, but in terms of, I mean, even with our health systems, sometimes really it's, 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 a, uh, it's a mission or, or to uh, cater for everyone. But at the same time, we do have uh, stakeholders uh, that comes on board yeah. uh, to try to fight this disease. For instance, uh, in those certain countries, they do have funding from WHO, CDC, yeah. uh, funding them, and uh, also South Africa, because I know they have elimination aid. So they're trying to fight for this disease. Hence, those certain areas keep on never being qualified to a vaccine. We don't have vaccine in South Africa. But those countries, they are prioritizing them because they are seeing a high number of cases. 
countries that are giving them vaccines. Mm. Yeah. Just lastly, before I let you go, so when can, I mean, where can people find information? Um, um, is there, you know, uh, information in various health facilities on the website of the department mm -hmm. if people want to read more about it? Or maybe a number or a website where people can go to? We have uh, on our website, yes, you can uh, get those kind of information. Also on our Facebook, I know that they are very much active on Facebook. Uh, the Twitter for Gauteng Department of Health, you can get uh, those information. Even in our facilities, you are able to get those. And also on the NICD website is where you can get uh, this kind of information. For people, is there for people to read and empower themselves about this disease. Just lastly, um, in, 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 in brief, uh, yes. what would be the advice that you can give to people that would want to travel, uh, you know, outside the province, outside the country? Uh, what would be the message from the Houghton Department of Health? From the Department of Health, we want to stress travel. I just want to bring uh, 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 and also to inform people that last year we reported 1,339 cases and 16 people died from malaria. So as the department, we are urging people who are traveling to the endemic areas to please, please do seek medical attention, like go to our facilities inquire about the chemo prophylaxis that are available at our facilities so that when you get into those areas at least you've got some kind of protection and when they come back we are also encouraging them that when you went to those endemic areas if you are not feeling well seek medical attention immediately no one should die of malaria but because people are presenting very late in the health facilities, we end up losing so many lives each and every year. The more much appreciated, very insightful indeed, and I hope that people would adhere to the messages and they will visit the health facilities to yes. get the necessary help. Much appreciated for coming in. Thank you so much, Tabu. That was uh, Teboho Machoko Cha, who is the Deputy Director at uh, Communicable Disease Prevention and Control at the uh, Gauteng Department of Health, educating us about malaria and the state of the disease, particularly in the province of Gauteng, as the world commemorates the illness today in an effort to control and ultimately eradicate it. Well, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bye, Tsuridiri Leholikano from myself and the rest of the team. Good night and thank you for watching.